Hello and welcome to the Beginner's Handbook. I'm Jordan. I'm Jamie. And in this episode, we're actually coming back to part two of creating rememorable games. Mm. Uh, I think this is the first time we've ever actually done a like a parts type thing for an episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we've we've seen the kind of Hollywood pattern that's been going on, and we've decided to jump in that bandwagon as well. So, yeah, yeah let's. I see how that goes. Yeah, so basically, it's actually quite, it's a double cool episode for us because it's our first time doing that, but it's also, I think I think that episode will be out there, the last one you would have seen, um, or it's the first one we've recorded after actually doing the, the year-long anniversary, um, so you've probably seen mm -hmm. the anniversary episode, and this one's probably going out quite a bit after it, but yeah. it, I, it's going to be part, part of the new format, so we might be doing some more part ones and part twos or whatever, just, mm -hmm. just to try this new format that we're giving a go. Um, so what that was for those that might have missed that other episode is one I recommend checking it out because there's quite a few things we spoil that's coming up but uh, really we're talk the thing specifically we're talking around with the podcast is cutting and making them a bit shorter and just I think it's easier for us but it's also probably easier for yourselves as listeners or watchers mm -hmm. um, but anyway that's beside the point so this episode's part two of rem creating rememorable games so I, I think, is there anything you want to say before we jump straight into it? Very quickly, if you haven't seen the first part, but you're going to watch or listen to this part without watching or listening to the first part, what we mean by rememberable games is a game that you can, you can recall not quite every single minute detail, but you can recall 90% of the events that happen, mm even down to smaller things without having to do anything that's particularly out with your routine when you play a game so you're not suddenly taking notes when you don't normally take notes or when you're taking your notes you haven't got double the amount that you normally take or anything like that just the kind of the games that stick in your mind for you know whether it be a right reason or a wrong reason that's what we're talking about yeah definitely so and just to kind of almost touch upon what we spoke about last time as well when I say or when we say rememberable games it's not just talking about amazing big dramatic games or huge explosions and all that good stuff although those games are great by the way but it's just about having games where even if people didn't take a lot of notes that people remember what's going on yeah. uh, I think I probably mentioned it in the first part of this but certainly the groups that I've got, particularly one of the groups who we get as lots of is, and you're speaking about seven or eight, sometimes a, a couple more, uh, possibly. Uh, but usually there's a lot of people there. We'll get booze involved. You know, we're having a good time. So, But the thing with games like that is they can guarantee nobody is taking notes. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the end of the night, I'm not taking notes either. It's just there's too much going on and too much things. But people still remember what's going on. So it's how is it you actually create and craft a game in that way. So yeah, that's it. I think last time was more about what is like a rememberable game and some of the ideas that we had to make a game more rememberable. Uh, but this episode we wanted just to expand on a couple of things and maybe suggest stuff that maybe we've tried or even things that we feel like we're doing anyway in the games that we run. Uh, so little tips and tricks. Mm. It's maybe more like expanding on what we've already spoke about. So if you're coming in blind to this episode, you might not be too lost, but it might make more sense if you've seen that first episode. It's not mm. as long anyway, because I think we tried the shorter for format for that one. Um, but cool. All right. I think we'll just jump straight in. Mm. So I think for me then, I, I'll just start off with one of the things I do all the time. And it's mostly, I think I would have said in one of the, the note-taking episodes, just one of the little snippets from that, as uh, I don't often take tons of notes. One, not really as a player, um, because well, actually as a player, I've definitely taken more recently after talk, doing that episode. Just I think cause it was at the forefront of my mind, but hmm. but I still don't take a lot of notes. And as a GM, I really don't take a lot of notes because I just find with the size of groups that I run for, um, it's generally too much. And uh, well, we did a Pathfinder recently, and I didn't take any notes either. Hmm. But I mean, that's a published module; it's a lot easier to manage, I would say. But um, yeah, so even though I don't take lots of notes, one thing I do factor in, and it helps me remember what's happening, is I think last time we spoke about, or particularly myself, because that's just how I build my games, but you have like your modules, so I think it was like, yeah, this, like say it was like beginning, middle, end, and they could they, they could comprise of little yeah. building blocks, but uh, cert certainly one of the things I do when it 
comes or approaches the end of your game or the end of a session, uh, one of the things I do, especially because we spoke about having your, your little building blocks, almost like every scene that you've got, it's like a, it's mm-hmm. a block of its own. Um, but especially when I plan to finish a game, I usually do the ending properly or, or plan it properly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I have a few extra possible endings that are before that in a timeline, if you want to call it that for now. Um, so what I call that is that it's a coding term, but it's a guard, what I call it a adding in guard clauses for your games. Um, so what I mean by that is, let's say, oh, did I use one of your games? Like, let's use Alien. I use Alien a lot, probably in reference, not just yourselves, mm-hmm. but it, your game that we did of it. But the Alien RPG, what the Chariots of the God, or I think the other cinematic scenarios, that they're built as Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. So it's very much what I was talking about with like, yeah. the, the blocks. Um, so one of the things where I mean really I think it says in the front of that game it's a one shot I've never ran it as a one shot I've never had enough time to do that for sure even at four or five hours mm. but uh, one of the ways you could do it let's say you wanted to run it as a one shot and part of the way through that game let's say you get to act two and you're not done and you go I've not got another night um, one of the things I do in my own games and you could do with Alien is if, you're, if you realise you're not getting to your end point there's loads of ways to, especially if you've planned it, think of ways to almost end the game at various points. Um, with Alien, it, oh, I don't see this. At the end of Act 1, there's a big sequence with an alien appearing. And if you were expecting to get through the full game, but only get to the near the end of Act 1, yeah. you could use that as the ending. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's how you call the game there. Yeah. Uh, guard clauses and coding is basically just, if you hit a certain criteria, it stops... You know, well, I won't go too much in detail, but it'll stop doing the code and like go back. But with the endings in games, it's almost like having these many ways to end the game. You can, mm-hmm. It means you'll get various points where you could stop a game depending on how players are doing. Um, I can't. I don't even have any recent examples. Uh, well, I've done a Warhammer game that had this where it was a big, lots of action, lots of blood and guts. People were dropped in and dropped pods and straight into combat in a war zone. And I was expecting these guys to go get to an enemy stronghold. They did not get close to that at all. But I knew there's probably two or three points. Like there was a fight I wanted them to mm-hmm. get to, which they would definitely do. After that, there was a wee reveal of the story. After that, there was a stealth sequence. And then there was going to be the actual getting to the stronghold. So I actually pulled them back. We got to the stealth sequence. So I could build that up as the ending for that game and just yeah. cancel out the rest. And for me as a GM, it means I go, right, we didn't get to the stronghold. So mm-hmm. we got the stealth sequence. Pretty easy. Does that even make sense? Explain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am. Um, it's just again, kind of touching on what we talked about the last time. That if you've got, if you've got the beginning, middle, and the end, just for kind of breaking Simplicity. it down as simple yeah. as that, then you go well. You've got the beginning, the middle, or the end of the whole story, and then. In your end section, you've got the beginning of the end, you've got the middle of the end, and then you've got the end of the end, and then for the middle, you've got the beginning and the middle, and blah, 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 right the way through. And then of the beginning of the beginning of the end, then you've got the beginning, you know, and you can break that down as many times as you need to, or as many times as you want. And as long as you get to a point where it is resolved, and that you feel that you know that some something meaningful has happened at this point, and you've got that ending. Then you know you can you can cut it there, and then like you're saying, you can either revisit it or you can end it, and then further down the line have that as the start point for a new game or whatever. Yeah, for sure. The thing is, it sounds maybe like I break my games into ten thousand little pieces, but the the fact actually yeah. is, I barely actually mm-hmm. write a game before I run it. I know what I'm doing with the game. But mm-hmm. usually it's because I use events and stuff for how the story's going to go. I kind of roughly know where I want a game to end, but you get used to kind of going, okay, I'll maybe stop a bit earlier. Mm-hmm. I had a game of D&D where players were supposed to, it was very much Lovecraftian themed, and they go to this fish town. Because I know some of the guys love Cthulhu, but they've barely played the game. But I thought, we'll just inject a bit of that for them into D&D. And they were supposed to get to this little town and see this big boss, but they actually only just got to the town but there was a sequence where they were going to get drugged and knocked out and then be used later on for it, um, like a ritual. And But I knew, as you're running games, a lot of the time you're able just, if you're 
willing to cut games short and not force and shoehorn in an ending that mm-hmm. you maybe pre-planned, you, it's easy to just go, cool, that makes a lot. Imagine just you get knocked out and you wake up in a cell. That's a good ending right there. You don't need to worry about mm-hmm. potentially playing on another hour and a half to actually get to a point like doing a big boss fight. As far as making rememberable games go, if you're able to break your games down, even Im- impromptu or improvise those sort of little mini endings, mm-hmm. it, you can you can find them all over the place in your games. And for your players, especially if it's like a good, like it doesn't need to be dramatic, but even being knocked out and being taken for a ritual. The guys spoke about this to me two weeks ago. We've not played it in about a month or two. Mm-hmm. And two, it was like a week or two ago, somebody said, oh man, I can't wait to play this because... And they sat and blurted out half the stuff that happened. Mm-hmm. And I went, oh... I forgot that happened, um, just because I wasn't thinking about it. But uh, yeah, it's it's a great way to just. I I think the main goal of ha- these what I'm calling guard clauses, but a main goal of having these like potentially endings that are before the the, the real ending you planned, uh, these mini endings. Let's call mm-hmm. them that for now. Is for me what's important about games is actually session length. Uh, I find if you run too long, and I've been a victim of this, and I'm seeing the victim. Uh, you were the victim of this for the first ever game of Cthulhu I ran, it, which ran for like six hours or something. It was stupid. It was way too long. Um, but it was longer than that. Eight hours, like, maybe. We, we it started was, like it's at max eight hours. It was definitely at max eight hours. It didn't. Might, yeah, might have been longer than that. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was not long. Eight hours. Well, we didn't leave till three in the morning, and we started. Six or seven or something. No, didn't start at six. It's so. But point being, with uh, these long games, is sometimes like ah, this happened a few weeks ago, and the game was good. Uh, now it's not anyone you know that it wasn't anybody that we play with um, together. That is, mm-hmm. but there was a game. Oh God, I, I, I what how much? Basically, it was good. But, but we were supposed to get clearly the GM mm-hmm. had an ending for us and it had to get to that point I remember saying we need to be done for this time because I'm up and doing stuff whatever in the morning I've got work etc I know this guy doesn't maybe start work to late morning or afternoon in some mm-hmm. cases so he's got more time in, in the evening but I don't especially when I'm driving people home at the end of the night mm-hmm. and it, it just kept going. I seen it. I mentioned it a few times. Like, look, by the way, we're here. I'm happy. How long's left? Because it's now quarter past 11, you know? Mm-hmm. And basically, what happened is we were, everybody was fatigued at this point because we'd been playing for like four and a half hours, you know? And yeah, it just it went on and on. But at that point, people started checking out. And for me, this is where this, like, the the wee extra endings or the, the potential pit stops before the one you planned is a good way to cut it down. That because the first Cthulhu game mm-hmm. I ran could have been, I mean, to be honest, we could have cut as various points. Like, you just found that I think this weird villagers, there was like a church scene, mm-hmm. there was a hut scene. Like, there was a, there was at least creepy two tree. or three creepy tree. There was at least two or three very good points that would have stopped his like less than five hours. But mm-hmm. actually, ideally for me, I think a session's about three, three and a half hours. That's probably as long as I want because, especially if there's lots of combat. That's like enough thinking going on, yeah. and in my opinion, short and sweet's better than long and whatever the opposite, whatever nice phrase mm-hmm. there is for saying not sweet is, because um, as much as I loved that Cthulhu game, it sucked because it was way too long. It was probably a three nighter. Looking at it now, yeah, it would have been, and especially since that was like the first time that three out the four of us had used that system as well so there was a bit of you know checking double checking doing something and then going oh no I shouldn't have done you know and all the kind of teething problems you get with a new system but ultimately what I remember from that is that when you're talking about like people checking out and stuff I feel that everybody was good up until pretty late on and then it was just kind of all of a sudden like it, everybody just seemed to hit the wall at the same time I had myself but, included as well yeah I was but kinda... it, it was a strange one because I think it was as well because everybody kind of got fatigued at the same time I'm sure you went well, well we call it quits here and Aye, everybody but that was went, dead late as yeah, well though yeah but then at that point it was 
ah, no, let's keep going. And ah, it's nearly done anyway. And yeah, it was, but because you're getting more tired as time's going on, it's probably putting more delays in between doing checks and stuff, which then meant that if we weren't tired, it was maybe like only another hour maximum that was left but it ended up being the three hours or whatever it was yeah because that was when it so the game started about seven uh, between seven and eight i would say if you include people arriving or whatever but let's mm. say seven was probably when it started and it went on to like three that's a long game actually how long is that seven eight so that's eight nine ten eleven one eight two hours. three yeah eight hours i mean that's a long so it wasn't it wasn't 10 hours thank god if it was 10 hours god damn we would have been leaving at flaming 5 o'clock in the morning mm. but um, yeah I mean yeah, it was just way too long I know, I know people that do that by the way and that's cool mm. man some people like long games but for me if you want games to be super easy to recall you know you, you don't want it to be 8 hours long yeah. you know I mean you rattled off a couple of the main points actually which was at various points and quite mm. spaced apart in some sections but that's probably the main stuff you remember whereas if you if it was games I broke down and was better at kind of running, I think better at running, but better at planning, you might remember all these small details and stuff as well. Yeah, because he really, really quickly, and I won't bother boring anybody with it, but try to remember the details. I can remember a good chunk at the start, a good chunk at the kind of start to middle, middle, middle to kind of late middle, then almost nothing, and then the very last thing that happened. Yeah, I can remember, I mean, I, I remember most, but then I ran it more than once and the mm. other group I ran it for, I think we did it in three or four sessions. Yeah. I think we did about two hour blocks. Um, so, but I, so the thing is that the shorter the game or, you know, the shorter the game, the, the less people need to recall at the next session and that's what's good though about having these mini endings because you can just go, oh, especially if, I think if you're being a considerate GM as well and you know people maybe work in the morning, you don't need to have somebody say to you, uh, let's finish you know, before 12 o'clock tonight, please. You know, mm-hmm. It's better just to finish a bit early. Um, even the guys I play with on Friday nights, we used to run to three or four in the morning, some mm-hmm. sessions. So that's the sort of length that yeah, yeah. that first game was, but it was every time, every week. Um, and we decided to stop that for a couple of reasons. But even now, sometimes I'm finishing at half ten. You know, at late latest it's midnight, but usually it's half eleven. I'm cutting it early because I find okay, this is a good little mini ending that we've got mm-hmm. to. But it will take another hour to get to the ending I planned. But this is a nice yeah. little ending here, so it's worth it. I really hope the whole guard clause analogy makes sense because I'll tell you something. There's a lot of GMs. I think that well, the one some of the guys I know that run games, I think they would probably benefit from that, especially guys that run on way too long. Yeah. Um, our group's not so bad for that at all, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think the latest we've probably ever run is like, well, in the recent times, is like midnight, and that's like pushing it, I would say. Mm. Um, whereas, and that's like I'm talking about the last couple of years, possibly. Um, at least on average, maybe some outliers. But some other guys I know they're going an hour and a half over time every week. You know, it's kind of like, mm-hmm. and something when you check out, you know, it's like, I don't remember any games. I said that to one of the guys. Yeah. I don't remember what happened last week at all. So sometimes I check out by the time I get there because I know it's going to mm-hmm. be three hours of combat. But um, yeah, so I think that's something that's it's definitely useful and it's worth trying. And it's maybe if you're not feeling good with it yet, you'll pick it up when you just, you don't even need to make a big deal about it. Just do your game as normal and then go, where's a couple of points we could stop before the main end? And just do one or two additional endings before the one you planned. And just yeah. the, plan them in as almost like an extra dot mm-hmm. on the timeline. And you might find people remember games a bit better. Um, you don't need to make it big, a massive spectacle, but. Mm-hmm. I think it's worth just it's worth trying it because I, I feel like people remember the games quite well. I think you just didn't have any issues with recalling any of the recent games that we that I ran. I think you were really good with Alien. I think you were on the ball with that one, and mm-hmm. Blarhammer. I think you just remembered more than I did. There was a few things I totally forgot about, and then you just blurted it out during the game. I went, oh, better just forgot about that. I had to change quite, a wee thing. Scribble. There was something I'd added in because I forgot that you discovered something. I went, mm-hmm. oh, I better change that. And I had to change it on the fly. <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much. And I, again, with that one, I think it is pretty much pretty much like you're saying, rather than going, right, well, we're kind of near what I'd planned, so I'll just plough on anyway. Ending at that 
little bit earlier because you're either getting to like a time that you've decided is what a, a no go after mm-hmm. that point or you know that okay we could run on longer but the problem is I know I don't have enough time to get to that the next nice point to end uh-huh. at which means that we'll hit the, the no go time zone which means you know you're in this kind of weird sort of no man's land you know w- whatever the reason is then I, again it's all worked in good from that point of view and as well just slightly shorter sessions as well is helping as well because yeah you know if you do less or less to remember you know to- so. totally agree because when i did alien for the, the other group i mainly run for um they got part way through act two and we'd, it was months before we played the session so i basically said we're right on in it until the part or we're reversing everything right up until the alien showed up mm-hmm. and then we'll just you can redo their, everybody remembered what they'd done which i wasn't really impressed with but they, some of them just redone what they'd done mm-hmm. but it meant for new players i had a good new starting point so there was a couple of new guys that joined us for that game so it's definitely worth doing and as i say sometimes it might not sound that great when i say you don't need a big flashy ending for it to be rememberable but the difference between having these mini endings in and not is if you p- keep pushing to try and get to your ending. Either people just don't enjoy the ending the way you wanted it, mm-hmm. eh, the way you thought they would. You probably don't do as good a job as you wanted to because you rushed it. Or potentially you're stopping in the middle of a combat sequence, which is just a its not a great way to finish a game, I think. Um, or even in the middle of an investigation or some expedition piece. You don't want to end in the middle of something. It's better just to call a, a close mm-hmm. at, at something else, I would say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's really all I've got to say about the like, uh, many endings or mm-hmm. what I'm calling guard clauses for this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, do you have anything you'd like to add next? or In terms of like the guard clause stuff, another way of thinking about it from the kind of video game perspective checkpoints you know that kind of thing but yeah that, that's reason, a good point the reason I didn't really say that earlier on is because like, with a checkpoint you know you're not done and you're always going to kind of get forced back to that point but it's kind of rough way of thinking about it it's, it's actually it's probably a better fitting analogy um, rather than some technical coding yeah, term probably. But, sweet, but yeah, it's it's but that's a it's a perfect way to think about it. And rather than the only caveat is just don't think about people losing progress. It's just the checkpoint is actually get up to the checkpoint and then you can get yeah. out of there. You quick save almost and leave. Auto save. That's a better one. Save. Quite, uh, yeah, true. Um so yeah, I think the next thing then, mm. moving on to just expanding some of the stuff we spoke about before, is actually this isn't so much a tip more than just something a general piece of advice and it's just understanding that all endings are going to be flaming phenomenal cliffhangers you know they don't need to be actually mm-hmm. and in most cases of the games I do that not every game's a cliffhanger at all mm-hmm. and some games aren't I think Act 2 the end of Act 2 for Alien I don't think had anything particularly special the end of Act 1 was the, the Alien which is like oh crap but there's nothing for Act 2 yeah. but that doesn't make it a bad ending you know um, it's, so it's worth just as a GM if especially if you're a newer GM you know while cliffhangers are gold they might not necessarily make the best ending if you've maybe went over time mm-hmm. and are then potentially going to rush the cliffhanger you know you're almost better letting that sit um, mm-hmm. or giving it space but you also don't want to push past times that people are going to start losing their um, interest in that yeah. happens to me a lot because I, I run so many games and play, run and play sorry I should say so many games because I mean I'm playing well now I'm I'm down to three or four a week whereas I was up for four or five a week and when I was doing four or five I was running all of them bar and people were asking you to do more I, I was asked to do another one actually now but um, so not right now but recently so it's at that point like especially when every game I was doing it four or five mm-hmm. times a week was going over I just started going I can't bother with this anymore you know mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's just too much. Um, so you know, just be comfortable with maybe an end not being great. If you're going yeah. to use the checkpoint idea that we've spoke about or the guard clause now called a uh, checkpoint from now on, uh, idea, you know, understand that the end might not be great. And even level with people, I do it all the time. It's like they get to a combat sequence or just before one, and I'm going, look, I don't want you to run into combat, so we're going to end it here. And this is a bit, 
Uh, you know, and people are cool with it. You know, they're all right, especially because you know we can chat about games, and a lot of the time I find if you give people. If you finish early, sometimes people chat for a bit about the game and it almost reconsolidates everything in their brain. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think the main thing is don't worry about having some dramatic ending every single game because while cliffhangers are great, they're be- you're better giving them the time to sit and land mm-hmm. than it is to rush them through. Um, mm-hmm. And certainly all my endings aren't amazing, but everybody seems to remember what's happening, you know, um, because I, I finished them with something easy to remember I guess yeah yeah and I mean the thing is as well like talking about that kind of period to talk about things after the game and then you know going off and heading home or whatever it is like a thing that we get told when we were in school from a teacher who I don't know if she realised the kind of impact in a negative sense this would have on people was that when it comes to studying, your brain remembers a lot of information just prior to you going to bed. Mm-hmm. Which, to me, went, hmm, don't do the Study work during night. the day, yeah. cram for five minutes, go to sleep. Um, but, you know, it, it's that same thing as well. So if you're playing in an evening and then everybody then goes home and then gets ready, goes to sleep, if you've got that period of chatting about it and whatever beforehand whilst everybody's still fresh, everybody's still awake, then it then means that when you then sleep, wake up the next day and things, it is still going to be rattling about there somewhere rather than, you know, it just gets lost in the ether. Yeah, it's something I see, especially, I mean, more often than not, in the, the games that run on Fridays, if it's the kind of OG, the original campaign that mm-hmm. we've been doing now for over two years, it's crazy to think. Um, it started off as a one shot, and now they can't get, we can't stop playing it. But uh, quite a, more often than not, I finish the games a bit early because what ends up happening is they just they harass me about keeping going because they clearly enjoyed it and they want to keep playing. But it's also I'm going well. This person is to, needs to leave at twelve, and this person, mm-hmm. that person might be checking out. That person is drunk, so I'm, I've had enough of dealing with that tonight. You know, whatever it might be, or whatever combination of that it might be. Um, more often than not though if I leave the room or I'm getting a drink or whatever they're scheming because they want to beat me and they always beat me in these games it's a pain in the ass but they you know they sit and scheme stuff and they'll, they'll mm-hmm. chat about it and for them that's also part of the fun whether or not I think they, they recognise that now but certainly in the earlier days of cutting it short they they didn't realise that that was actually part of their um, ritual for the games you know it's like that's actually the scheme and it's almost like the end character stuff happening but the GM doesn't need to be present uh, and I know they've got a separate chat to scheme against me because they showed me it and there was some pretty good plans uh, in it although that was for stuff that had already happened so mm-hmm. I couldn't use that knowledge to my advantage but um, yeah for sure so Deb, mm-hmm. I mean, I basically I get comfortable with just knowing I didn't need some dramatic um, series ending a series style ending for every game you know I just I just finished at times it was most appropriate yeah um, I think on top of that I would say and this maybe happens maybe not as common um, but certainly somewhat commonly is if your game ends on a low note that doesn't mean it needs to be a bad ending it, people might be happy to go yeah it's a good place to stop it might not be dramatic but that's actually a good chance to Take it, it was, you could take advantage of that mm-hmm. and we spoke about there um, with people talking about the games to each other after a game you as the GM can literally just summarise for the ending itself you summarise out of character to the players what they've done what their intentions are and you just narratively try and describe it and make it sound very cool like if they're going on this new adventure you know you can mm-hmm. describe it as that and, and kind of try and get them involved just in your summary almost the way you might do a recap or an introduction you're almost setting the scene for the next game and for people like that's actually could be a good ending in itself for them Mm -hmm. especially one of the things I started throwing into games recently was just I'm a big fan of film so I always try and describe things like a film um, just in my head that's how it all works and some of the stuff I've been doing is, let's say characters missed something that happened, let's say it's one of the Cthulhu games I was doing, and they missed this big clue about one of these characters who wasn't actually dead, they, they walked past them, but it was somebody who had died, and it was actually they were infected with something. So I actually had to pull away from their characters, the, the scene, 
and like swoop into this other room but this guy was starting to get up and go for them um, but I used that as the, the cliffhanger for the next game mm-hmm. because I just gave them because we were now out of character and I was doing a summary almost done an out of character thing their, their guys don't know but as players they then go cool this is what's mm-hmm. going to happen next game and some people maybe argue it's spoilers but I find more often than not you know players enjoy being immersed in the game but they also like because they're role playing but as players themselves they enjoy to know what else is going on in games a lot of some yeah. players ask for lore even though they don't really might not know it necessarily mm-hmm. I do it with them um, our main um, the guy that runs most of our games but some of his stuff I've asked him about some of the wider implications of stuff mm-hmm. not that my character would know but because I'm interested because he's put mm-hmm. a, a huge amount of work in yeah yeah. I mean it's like you, if if you're really into something then you, you never just stop at the surface level details again if it's like a movie or whatever like surface levels people just sit down and watch it and go home and kind of in a wee bit deeper is thinking about the different things a wee bit deeper is going away and buying a book and like the particular kit that they use to film it or you know whatever and you can go as far and as deep as you as you want with that and again it's the same thing like you're talking about somebody might you know create that world and whatever and all the characters are doing what they're doing but like you're saying depending on how experienced they are as a DM or GM, how much time effort they've put in, how serious they are about it, that, you know, every, every time that you kind of get to the next layer, they're probably already two or three layers ahead of you and, and working and working and working and going to continue to work in that setting. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, definitely. I, I'm, I'm going to give some spoilers of Alien because this is how you could do it for Chariot of the Gods because this is like the, perf- the perfect example for, for it. And you've never seen it. Actually, I think everyone I've ran it for has not seen this yet because the sessions, I wanted to make sure there were just three sessions, mm-hmm. short and sweet. Um, but there is a ship actually, and you actually see it at the start of the game. So when the players that are a part of the US CSS Montero and they're going to check out some distress signal um, and if players succeed in a certain check or I think you can, you can just give them the, the, the success um, they actually identify another ship so mm-hmm. it's not the Kronos which you're going to it's another ship on the outside um, and it pings on the radar as something unide- un- unidentified and one of the things that you could use to just to kind of give you an idea like if we were to end act two I mm-hmm. can't even remember how that ends but you could resolve what's going on in game with the players and finish off whatever bit they got to and when you're actually pulling back and maybe doing just a summary of the game you can be pulling out and actually showing them like that so pulling away from the chronos you mm-hmm. see this other ship appearing from from the back you know and almost silo almost like you get a three quarter shot from behind of this new ship looking over to the chronos firing its engines and then heading towards it then people go oh crap there's a ship coming to us new ship what the hell um, and and that's a way for to give players it's almost is it dramatic irony when people in the theatre know stuff that the characters don't um, mm. I can't remember what, what the phrase is they use for that but players I, I find personally at least maybe it's just our group so mm-hmm. um, we, we quite enjoy knowing some of the extra stuff even though our characters don't and we, we don't act like our characters know we, we do what our characters mm-hmm. would do with the knowledge they have but we know something cool's happening and we might even try and work with the GM to make that work and mm-hmm. make things smoother as well. And I think it's a, it's a great tool to kind of get people... It's, it's an easy way to get a good ending that's re- easy to remember. If you give them something cool, it doesn't always need to be from the perspective of the player characters. It's just something to think about because mm-hmm. you'll probably find and realise quite a few um, ways you could be bringing that into your games and it's also a good way to add hints to games yeah yeah and again a sort of flip side from that is that say a cliffhanger I mean that's Mm -hmm. probably the most obvious kind of dramatic tool for setting up another game another film another you know whatever but if you're doing that every single session every single time then number one the cliffhanger starts to lose its impact and if you start out with something small then to kind of have the same impact you need to go 
bigger and better the next time and it kind of snowballs from that point there. So when you're coming to an ending, try and switch up how you're doing it. And you said earlier mm-hmm. on about, you know, doing something almost kind of unassuming to end it. If you do that something unassuming, then when you restart the next time, then if you're leading into something that's dramatic, if you, you know, calm everything down and then they walk into a, a trap, an ambush or whatever, then it's it's switching that up. So you're given rather than the big climactic scene at the end, you resolve it nicely, but then at the start there's something really dramatic that then sets everything up going there forward. So it's almost like <laughs> it's almost like taking the cliffhanger but you know shifting it to the start that sort of a thing yeah this sort of stuff as well isn't an exact science and it's better just to try what works because even yeah. some of the stuff I'm suggesting you might not be comfortable having almost like these checkpoint like systems mm-hmm. and that's okay you know a lot of some of the stuff we're talking about as well like I'm talking about having these like kind of out of character almost like you know movie like sequences mm-hmm. that's that characters don't know but players do because you're basically spoiling bits of story to get them hooked a cinematic sequence cinematic sequence cinematic scenarios and um, not Cthulhu, sorry alien um but i mean and the thing is i don't always do i forget to do them as well because you get carried away and all that mm-hmm. but i find generally like most of the games that i've been running at least on fridays and then some of the like strad and things that i've been doing as well i was giving people hints and str- it's a huge game so mm-hmm. i was giving them hints of where to go but i was doing it via uh, baba lazaga who was actually we'd see this character doing stuff and kind of hinting and talking to herself and she was actually revealing hints to players to help them just get through some of the open world aspect of Strad. but I didn't do that every week and sometimes I just finish in a low point and we just go there and just summarise the game no weird dramatic cook mm-hmm. everybody was satisfied so variety is probably the best thing but you'll probably find your own flavour for, for whatever you're yeah. good at for doing games and it's better just to do what you feel comfortable with mm-hmm. try it all and you'll have good tools the best Almost the best thing I even suggest without to do it, even with endings and across the board, it's worth trying different systems. If you stick to one generally, it's worth jumping to others to see how they do it, uh, and particularly other modules. So if you do D&D, mm-hmm. try a couple modules and see how they do it, but then try a Cthulhu game and see how they actually do their narrative, um, because it's more puzzle-based, so they might have hooks in different styles that maybe you've not tried, but you might be really good at. Um, so it's, it's just variety mm-hmm. is good, even just with how uh, what games you run, because that's how I learned a lot of this stuff and just picked up things that I enjoyed doing, mm-hmm. like teasing players and giving them info they shouldn't have just to make them go rabid about it. And then when they started misbehaving, I'd be saying, no, oh, you don't know that yet, even though they knew it, but their characters didn't. I'm just like, they knew I was just there to squeeze it like, out of them, you know? Um, so definitely, yeah. Mm-hmm. cool I think then what we'll do is there's one more thing this is something super simple and actually it's almost similar to something we've just spoke about mm-hmm. and for me it's my best prompting tool it's the tool I use all the time and I don't even think I told you what this was probably not I actually still we spoke about this we've not talked about it before we started recording and I don't really remember us talking about that yeah, I will. Might have talked about it in general, but you haven't specifically when I use you'll, this because it's. You'll know then if I've said you'll know when I'm going to talk about it. But I basically my favourite prompting tool, and this is going to throw in a lot of people might not like this. I certainly know some of the guys that we know will not like it. But my favourite prompting tool is actually doing the recap. That's it. It's the best way, in my opinion, to just dump stuff on players that they might have forgot. It's a great, well, I'll go into what that is. When I say doing the recap, one of the things, and it's became a bit of a pet peeve, not for every group, some groups, I think we're quite good, but there's other groups where, and maybe this will feed into a different episode, where we might be asked to do a recap. If you didn't know anything, you didn't get your inspiration, or, you know, whatever, um, and it's just, you know, you know whatever. And then you've got no interest, and it's almost starting on a bad note because because you don't can't do a recap, you don't get a wee reward, meaning you're kind of penalised for it or punished. But um, what I mean specifically is not going to people who remembers what happened last time. I really I've started not to dislike it. You're laughing because this happens in our group as well. 
Although we're a bit more in tune, you know, see because there's less of us and stuff, it's not I, so hard. I'm just thinking of the, the dislikes that are firing in just now and the, the, the unsubscribes and, and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Just, <laughs> just from a very specific group. <laughs> yeah. I, but, but, and hear me out is what I'm going to say because, and there's, I sometimes ask people what happened last time too because I might not actually remember I have the note, but my main point mm. to actually having games that are more rememberable is actually you as the GM doing the recap. I think that's way more effective because what you can do, and that doesn't mean players don't have input in the recap. Don't mistake me for talking about like making it sound like it's a GM monologue. It's not that at all. Mm-hmm. What I think, and you might have noticed it with Alien, but I've definitely done it with, with Warhammer. Um, where I'll describe what happened in that game, you know, and I'll open it up as we go along, or I might ask it. However, just if people interject, that's cool. It's you know, I'm happy for people to do that. But what I'm doing, and it's it's I'm doing it specifically to get the gears firing. It's the warm up for the mm-hmm. people that are just joining the game, mm-hmm. and you'll know this as GMs yourself. Yeah, you usually remember your games pretty well. Players, on the other hand, and I'm guilty of this, might not remember a damn thing that happened, but once things start ticking, it's like everything starts to fire off again and you make all those connections. And that's why I do the recap when I run games. I say, this is what started to happen in this. And I go, and what was it? And I actually ask people what they'd done. I might already know, and I might say that you did something and prompt them because then that gets them to start thinking about their game. So the stuff I'm recapping fires off what they've done then it gets them thinking, if they can't remember, if I prompt them and they don't remember, that's fine, I can tell them. But more often than not, they'll remember and they I'll be corrected a lot of the time too because I might get a wee detail wrong here and then people are jumping in. But that does a whole bunch of stuff. It gets the gears firing. It reminds people what on earth actually happened. Uh, and as a GM, why I love recaps, especially if it's a puzzle-heavy game, you can be dropping in little hints to that recap and mm-hmm. specifically you can recap things that are most important to that game, um, which is a really good way to do it if it's a more complicated kind of puzzle based game. Uh, you can really drone in what people are hone in, sorry, on what people should be focusing on naturally mm-hmm. in a way that doesn't sound like the GM giving you hints. Um, but especially if you've just recapped something and the last thing you say is probably the step they should be taking, they're probably going to do that step. Not mm-hmm. always because it never goes to plan. But that's the recap is by far, at least me as a GM doing a recap, I think that's by far, I think the, sim- the easiest way to get people back in um, and especially just remembering things they probably forgot because mm-hmm. by the end of the recap, everybody's chatting about what they've done as well and correcting me and stuff and that's mm-hmm. cool um, because the whole point is you've recapped the game and it's now rememberable on top of that it re- it consolidates everything that happened anyway so sometimes people just yeah. you know don't, they don't need to recap mm-hmm. thoughts that's silly sounding no um with the recap as well this is this is something i've had personal experience of over the last last little while um and again bizarrely after talking about our note-taking episode and doing that more <laughs> um this is all ties in the same thing um, because a lot of our games are done through Roll20 yeah. then you know you're relying on technology and recently for me over the past mm. month and a half yeah. maybe longer uh, I've been having horrid horrid horrid, <laughs> horrid issues with it um, delays of up to was it seven seconds at one that point? That was the worst one. It's yeah. usually about four or five, and it's went up to seven. I mean, who knows? Maybe even longer, though. Yeah, yeah, possibly. So I've had that. I've had um, random crashes. I've had, a, like, all you guys, like, video and voice out of sync, which then means you think somebody's not talking, so then you start, but then somebody is, and, you know, all sorts and my note taking tool was the the computer that oh, I was that using as well. as well. Yeah, but then with the, the screenshot that showed you all the processor oh. stuff. So so basically long and short is I've been nursing this poor PC through for a long time now and it's finally it's finally put up on the shelf and it's final resting place as of what yesterday, the day before. Can't remember. Anyway, so I've been running into these issues, but what it's meant is that through a lot of the game, 
I'm missing bits because if I if I don't hear something properly, if I then ask for it to be repeated, it's happening seven seconds after it's actually been spoke about, which then can lead it on to, you know, a, somebody talking about something that you weren't actually wanting to talk about, or they then have to break at a weird time because you're just cutting across them and and all sorts of stuff like that coupled with the fact that I've not been taking notes because it's just been making the problem worse yeah. has meant that the recap for me over the past while has been crucial. It's not even just been, oh, it's a nice wee thing and it gets you kind of back into the feel and the swing of things. It's been literally crucial for me over the past while. So prior to just now, if you'd asked me about the recap, I probably would have went, eh, 50-50 on it. Whereas now I'm going, no, it, is, it does have a lot of value. And I get what you're saying with the who remembers what happened part because if if you're like me and you've had some form of issue or you've been a bit tired but you've still turned up or, you know, whatever it happens to be or just you didn't find the game that rememberable because everybody can have an off day but you don't necessarily want to tell that, <laughs> tell that to your GM's face and risk the wrath and watch your character die. Um, but... <laughs> so you know at that point the who remembers what happened it's kind of like talked about it earlier about being back in school being in an exam hall and getting quizzed to the you know whatever <laughs> whatever degree so starting off like that it can potentially put your players behind the eight ball and kind of get them a bit uptight either through them going Oh, I don't want to upset them if I miss out a key de- uh, I don't want to upset the GM if I miss out a key detail. <laughs> I don't want to upset the other players there if all I do is talk about myself because that's all I decided to take notes on, or you know whatever kind of micro micro anxiety that somebody has about it. You're asking them the question, so you're you're putting them in the spotlight rather than what you're saying, which is. So, you know, so last time this happened, this happened, this happened, and and it's just the GM doing it. That will be all right for more kind of shy players or whatever. But if you've got a bolder group, then it's kind of leaving them on the shelf at that point. So like you were talking about, then bringing people in <clears throat> and doing a kind of hy- hybrid thing between the the sort of narrative retelling of the story, the summary, and almost getting the players to kind of reenact some snippets between it mm-hmm. I, th- I think is the best combination for it and again if the GM leads then it's probably the best the best of both and then again even if it's a kind of a full memory issue from the GM and then they go oh and, and you done and leave a, a pause or Oh, and what was it you said again? Oh, yeah, that's right. They said blah, 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 and then taking it over and then running it in for the next person, the next person, until everybody's kind of been sort of not invited to speak because that sounds horrible. <laughs> Horribly it's kind of corporate. Uh, yeah. You, you will not spoken unless you're spoken to. But, you, you know, that kind of thing, just bringing everybody on board and then when you're happy, everybody's kind of said something or everybody's kind of engaged at that point then you're ready to hit start and then go forward from that point yeah and I came in pretty hard and not liking what happened last time but I mean it's not that I would never do it mm. um, I just I just personally don't think it's a good way to it's almost, it feels like a cold call to me you know I get people at the door asking about getting a new boiler mm. and I say to them I'm not interested and then they keep going in their spiel I'm like ah oh, god see this is for, so when I'm asked things, especially games that I've maybe not been that interested in, mm. you know, I'm asked, I'm just going, oh, man, I don't care. But, but that's the thing as well. Like even, like it's good trying different systems. It's good trying different settings and whatever else. Like, um, like for me, I hold my hands up at this point. Wasn't that interested in trying the Warhammer game? How dare you? <laughs> How did you enjoy it in the end though? Okay, the thing is I knew you probably weren't going to be that interested. I think I said to you a couple of times, but you don't need to play it if you don't want to. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But you said of course it wasn't like Jamie wasn't weird about it then. He just mm. I just I knew it wasn't a, a topic that you were as interested mm. in and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, and I mean ultimately the thing is like for me saying yes at that point wasn't because I'm going, Oh god, Jordan will 
Jordan will break down here if, if I don't turn up. Aye, you know, yeah. he'll, he'll, he'll go to pieces and I need to turn <laughs> up. I struggle in the S over not running again. <laughs> what was it? You know, it? you know, it's nothing like that. It was, I went, right, well, it's a new system we've not done. I, I know bits and pieces about Warhammer. I don't know a lot, so I'll find out a little bit more. I don't think I'm going to be particularly into the, the setting, concept, world, whatever, but let's see what happens. I didn't think I was going to be into D&D and RPGs, but I tried it. Turned out it was all right. This is what's good about our group, though. We're very yeah. much up, what, up for stuff. Mm, yeah, but anyway, turned up, done the game. Enjoyed it. Again, if I was asked, you know, like Warhammer, Cthulhu, Alien, you know, big list of stuff, it's probably going to be at the bottom mm-hmm. still because in general... I just for whatever reason don't particularly click with the world set and whatever but still enjoyed it still had fun still done something new and would quite happily play it again just if I had the choice I'd be picking other stuff yeah and but that's the thing and when it comes to games that maybe you're not interested in if there's games you're, you've bought into it's a lot mm-hmm. easier to remember the events of them yeah you did, yeah, a, yeah. You did a good job because there was a lot of crap I was throwing at Jamie because it was playing but, but that was the Sorry for jumping in yeah. and over you there. But that was the bizarre thing about that game. Me... Zero well, interest in Warhammer, pretty yeah, much. Aye. Only one other player I could think of who's got less interest than me. Uh-huh. Aye, and they thought... They didn't realise it was in space. That, that's how which little, I was shocked that, that's, that's how little the interest was. At least me at the start of the game. I think I was like the third most knowledgeable player, but then by the time the game got run, I, I, I dropped down a position, I think. Yeah. Because I, I didn't bother that. doing any research at uh, that point. Uh, but at the start, before it happened, I went, yeah, yeah, so there's 40k and then there's Warhammer itself. And, you know, I had that yeah. kind of vague, vague knowledge I, of yeah. it. Um, but, you know, during the games when it was the recap, I think it was me that was recapping most of it. Mm. Or yeah. at least did I, I not, was... Did I not like to... No, no, you, you still done that and things, but it was me going, oh yeah, but remember oh, we done this, that. remember we done that, remember... You Aye, know, that's was, right, yeah, yeah, you were really good with all the stuff. I, yeah. I was shocked, because for me, it's hard to remember games that I'm not interested in. Like, even sentence, I might be interested mm. in the game, but the sentence, you know, like, Jamie, I can't remember what class you played, it was one of the kind of... Uh, it was an Adeptus Mechanicus that's one, yeah. so that was, it was a group, a, a person from that kind of side of things. And some of the awesome stuff that you'd actually selected um, in terms of your abilities was like very. There was a lot of lore to mm-hmm. some of it, and there's a lot of stuff about the Omnissiah. And I even and I knew I was being cruel, but I made you do a prayer to the Omnissiah, some crap like that. Mm-hmm. And I knew you'd have no idea what you were doing. I couldn't resist. Um, but but still, I, you still remembered I, the I, games. I think I winged it pretty well. It, it did great. I think it gave you wrath points for it, or a wrath mm-hmm. point for it as well. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, but yeah, so you know, se- the second least interested person in the room, but probably the person that remembered the most. Why? Ultimately, you know, it it doesn't matter. I think me looking at it, it doesn't matter whether you're interested in it. It doesn't matter whether you particularly enjoy it or not. It's about your engagement, and from start to finish, I was engaged. Yeah, I, the only thing being interested in something or enjoying it does is probably make it easier to remember, if anything. But actually, the engagement's like the well, the core. Maybe not, and this is... And I'm only just thinking about this kind of out loud just now, but because I'm not super into Warhammer, then it means that if you, if you got even a smidge of detail wrong, uh-huh. it means that... In my head, I'm not going, oh, God, he's, he's turned around and called him Horace Heresy. Poor, what's that all about? Do you know what? I've changed my and, mind about the engagement thing. I just thought... And at that I, point there, as soon as, as soon as that wee micro thought pops in, going kind of tying in with metagaming and stuff, I'm now not listening to what you're saying. I'm now preoccupied with my own thoughts. I'm now not thinking about mm-hmm. the other players and what they're doing and what's happening and all that sort of stuff because I'm... I'm I'm now starting to do my own thing. I'm now starting to focus on my own thing. Whereas me as a neutral, if you like, means that I'm going, right, I need to listen to everything because I need to know it so that I don't get lost further down the line and other bits and pieces. So I was 100% engaged. And because I'm engaged, I've remembered it. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're engaged with something but you're lost with jargon or 
you mm. find it completely boring. Yeah, okay, you might be engaged. Yeah, okay, you might be listening to every word, but if you know, you, you need that magic combination of things. But I don't necessarily think being into something is the right or is the kind yeah, of not top yeah. Of the I agree because when I was thinking about engage, um, interest, that doesn't necessarily mean you listen. Yeah. I know from experience, but then it's maybe it's engagement because I've just not been interested enough to engage. But then there's games that settings that I'm trying to think of one of the ones the guys have done because there's a few things I remember saying in the past. It starts without number. I don't think I was really interested in playing that, but I was up for trying a new system. Didn't so I was and I still enjoyed the game, enjoyed the story. I was engaged enough in it. When I say not interested, it doesn't mean I didn't want to do it. It was just like weirdly sci-fi. Even fantasy, I do tons of D and D. Fantasy is not something I'm actually that interested in. I wouldn't seek out a fantasy thing, you know, to watch. Um, so you know, it's not like I'm going to go out and try and if I was watch a film, oh, I'm going to pick out some nice fantasy film. It's probably a scary film, you know, mm-hmm. but I still have a good time with it. So anyway, I think then the the bottom line with this mm. is. The recap is a great yeah, tool. I agree with you. <laughs> and yeah, and I mean, quite often I'm offering people, I might summarise someone's actions, say, have you mm. got anything else to add? And I'll get them to bring in. And it makes it more collaborative, mm. but also means as a GM, yeah. I can. I, it's my responsibility to get people back, mm. back in, and immersed. And I think me leading the recap rather than just leaving it as an open, almost toss a coin into the middle of the yeah, table and, situation. And, and again, I've, I've said it before in other episodes and things, if you one way of bringing people on board is to kind of sort of throw yourself under the bus a little bit so again if you if you got that kind of shyer group or whatever but you're still wanting to get them involved then do the recap do everything start to finish and then at the end of it go I think that was everything or I'm sure I'm sure that was everything. You know, put put a little bit of doubt in it because if you put that little bit of doubt in it, then you're giving them the opportunity to, to, to say in. something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like to mislabel mm. people as actions too and intentions. That really gets people jumping in. Say, I only done that because something really stupid and give a stupid excuse and they go, No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. And then it's I just cracks everybody up and then people start correcting you, which is fun too. Mm-hmm. But um, I so that's the kind of main thing. Most of the basis for all of that was stuff we spoke about in episode one. Yeah. yeah I said we'd try and keep it short and, I've, and we've seen it's longer, but that's fine. It's fine for this episode. But you'll start to probably see some of them will be a bit shorter, a bit longer. We'll see how we do. Mm-hmm. Um, but ultimately, everything there, it's worth giving all of that a go. That's stuff I, I've picked up at least through all the variations of games we've played, mm-hmm. the different ones that we've run individually or with others, whoever. And it's by no means a magic pill for, for running games that everybody's going to remember. But certainly if you can find things that work with your your style of running games, it'll enhance just what how your games feel to run. It'll feel smoother and people kind of pick up on that. Um, even yeah. if you don't know the rule system and you're checking stuff up, that doesn't necessarily mean your game won't run well. Mm-hmm. You know, It just means you might overrule stuff. Same thing with Warhammer and Frag Grenades, I might... I could just do a reflex and if I fail it just do all that damage you know mm. so anyway that is it for this episode yeah. uh, the episode this week so that will tie off making rememberable games and we may revisit the subject later on when I realise that everything I talked about today was nonsense so we'll see <laughs> who knows because I might, I might change my mind at a later time um, but that's it for this episode and it's, thank you very much for listening and watching from me uh, do you want to plug the socials? Yeah, so there is Facebook kicking about there, so you can leave us comments about whether you agreed with anything that either of the two of us have said or whether there's something that you want us to talk about at some point in the future. So you can do that. There's Facebook there that you can do at Twitter. There's Instagram under something you could leave us a comment or a direct message. There's Discord as well kicking about um, if you want to engage with that. And I think that's pretty much everything we've got. Pretty much everything. So thanks again for listening and watching. It's bye from me. And me as well.